introduce as first speaker Jean-Pierre Meon. Dr. Jean-Pierre Meon is a lawyer and it's been um, held a responsible position in a number of uh, organizations, including the Co Foundation, uh, which is uh, something we know uh, in initiatives of change, but he's been general counsel and chief compliance officer at SGS, the certification company. Chief Compliance Officer of the European Bank for Development and Reconstruction, EBR, EBRB. He has presided the Swiss chapter of Transparency International and been uh, uh, key in the 2011 edition of the rules on combating corruption of the International Chamber of Commerce when they were published. He's also a member of the ISO committee working on the anti-bribery management system standards, which is called the ISO 37001. And uh, so he has many uh, uh, reason to be uh, some, someone to be listened to in that field of corruption. So Jean-Pierre, if you would like to take it from there, it's all yours. Uh, Mike, Mr. Yes. Just a minute. So I will uh, speak about combating corruption globally. Uh, my uh, presentation or expose shall be divided in uh, three parts, uh, defining corruption and explaining how it manifests itself, uh, showing the progress on uh, legislation and practice and exploring the tools and support available to combat corruption. So now defining corruption and explaining how it manifests itself. Uh, the definition, uh, the well-known definition of transparent as corruption by Transparency International is the abuse of entrusted power for private gain or advantage. Uh, this includes uh, such uh, diverse uh, things as the potentate who cashes in on infrastructure projects and transfers millions of billions or billions abroad, the policemen who request or accept cash to overlook a violation of the driving code or a, or a purported violation, the customs officer who takes a bribe to clear goods through customs. Now, to give you some more vivid examples, um, there was also a case in Bangalore where nurses in a maternity war, ward uh, were extorting bribes from young mothers in order to bring them their newly born babies. Uh, the bribe was uh, $4 for a boy and $2 for a, for a, for a girl adding insults to injury. Uh, there was also a, a, a case in uh, the state of Uttar Pradesh in India, uh, a club of uh, people that have been declared uh, uh, dead uh, so that uh, their relatives, for example, an uncle uh, who wanted to acquire the field of his nephew would bribe a public official though that his nephew was declared officially dead. It can take uh, up to 20 years after that to, uh, to be declared alive again in India. And uh, the most uh, maybe horrific uh, case that I saw uh, was the case of doctors in an emergency ward in Serbia who had an arrangement with the funeral undertaker so that they would not prolong the life of their patients unnecessarily. Uh, distinction is normally made between large-scale corruption uh, and small corruption. The large-scale corruption is a corruption for large contracts for arms, infrastructure projects, mining. It takes place at the highest level of state, heads of state, ministers, high-ranking civil servants, members of adjudicating authorities. The amounts involved are in the hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars. 
the uh, arrangement and the bribe is most often negotiated by an intermediary, uh, an agent or a consultant, and the pay payments are uh, regularly channeled through anonymous companies located in offshore centers. A small scale corruption involves modest payments, mostly to low level customs officers, police, harbor management, medical personnel, professors, employees of telephone companies, etc. The amount paid in bribes in the world is uh, certainly in the millions of millions. Among the largest profiteers, several heads of state uh, were able to amass fortunes at the rate of a billion or several hundreds of billions of dollars each year. Uh, Transparency International issues every year this uh, Corruption Perceptions Index. It ranks countries according to the perceived level of corruption. The 10 least corrupt countries are mostly uh, uh, small countries from Northern Europe. Uh, there are two uh, non-European countries that also are in the, ten, uh, the first 10, uh, New Zealand and Singapore. Uh, now the large, uh, from the large countries, only Germany ranks among the first 10. The UK is 11, but the other large economies uh, do not uh, rank particularly well. France ranks 23rd, the US 25th, Italy 52, China 78, India 86, Brazil 94, Indonesia 102, and Russia 129, and that's out of 180 countries. The current health crisis has all had an impact on corruption. That's, for example, when corrupt actors use bribes to avoid a quarantine, or to avoid roadblocks, or even to uh, circumvent safe body collection procedures. Uh, ventilators and other Mexican medical oxygen related equipment may be the object of bribes and kickbacks. Jumping the queue for vaccination is another frequent occurrence. And uh, when um, new disbursements are expected and uh, these uh, disbursements, are, which are in very uh, high, uh, very high amounts, uh, where an oversight uh, is necessary, uh, it may be limited because official may be, officials may be unavailable because they are on quarantine uh, for themselves or for their uh, family. Uh, so there are difficulties to follow the disbursement of, crime, of, of funds. Uh, now let's turn to this showing the progress on legislation and practice. There are two uh, developments that have had a major impact on the fight against corruption in the last 20 years. Uh, the first of these uh, development is tackling international corruption. Traditionally, uh, international corruption was considered uh, as something that uh, countries did not have to deal with. Uh, countries should deal with the corruption of their own civil servants, but they had no business uh, dealing with the corruption by their own citizens of civil servants of other countries. Uh, this means that uh, corruption then remain unpunished in most cases because the beneficiaries were the uh, ruling elites of their country and they had no interest to do anything that could stop the money flow. Uh, the United States were the first to criminalize the corruption of foreign officials, but they were followed by all countries of the OECD. The OECD is the Organization of Economic Cooperation and Development. It, uh, it's a kind of a rich countries club all OECD countries uh, have now uh, have introduced legislation to prohibit international bribery, but uh, have been a bit lagging on the implementation. Uh, of the 47 countries that have uh, adhered to the OECD convention, only four are actively enforcing their legislation on the corruption of foreign officials, the US, the UK, Switzerland, and Israel. 
Now, uh, of course, I mean, among these four are the three uh, or three financial centers, the US, the UK and Switzerland. So that's, uh, uh, that has a certain uh, impact. Uh, nine other countries have moderate enforcement, 15 countries have limited enforcement, but of 47 countries, 19 have still little or no enforcement at all. Now, the second important development was the inclusion in the OECD Convention of the responsibility not only of individuals, but also of legal entities for corruption in their sphere of activity. That means that organizations such as corporations may be fined for acts of corruption committed on their behalf. And more importantly, the profits that they have made through these acts of corruption may be confiscated. Now, there have been major cases uh, where the financial penalties have reached hundreds of millions of dollars. In the largest cases, for example, the Odebrecht case in uh, Brazil, which is actually a constellation of uh, cases, and in the case of Goldman Sachs in the US and Siemens in Germany, the total penalties, fine and confiscation of profit have amounted to billions. So the introduction of the criminal liability of corporation has encouraged them to introduce measures and procedures to prevent corruption. Because uh, then, uh, if corruption still occurs in their sphere of uh, activity, uh, they would hope to avoid or alleviate their responsibility by showing that this was due to rogue individuals and not uh, a company policy. So there is interest for tools, instruments that permit to combat corruption. And that's uh, the third part of my expose, exploring these tools and support available for those who want to combat corruption. Uh, various tools were uh, developed by various organizations. The International Chamber of Commerce, it was mentioned, it has issued several edition, edition of rules for combating corruption. Transparency International has issued uh, business principles for countering bribery, also several editions. The OECD has published good practice guidance on internal controls, ethics and compliance. The United States Department of Justice has also uh, recently updated its evaluation of corporate compliance programs. Now, the most complete instrument, I think it's fair to say, is the ISO 37001 standard on anti-bribery management systems. It's not something new. It's uh, more of a codification of the existing uh, instrument uh, because there is a large consensus among all tools that have been developed about the measures that are helpful and necessary to prevent corruption in an international environment, in an organizational environment, sorry. Now, the most important factor in designing uh, anti-bribery measures is leadership. Combating bribery is about creating or reinforcing an integrity culture. This uh, requires an inner conviction that must exist at the highest level of the organization, at the board level, at the senior management level. If this conviction is not there, uh, it can be developed. It can be developed uh, by exposure to the uh, problem. Uh, but if it, if, it, if it does not, if it cannot be developed, it cannot be decreed. Leadership must also be clearly demonstrated. It is important to eliminate any doubt on the seriousness of the organization's efforts. 
appropriate resources must be allocated for the effective operation of the anti-bribery program. A person must be appointed to coordinate and support the operation of the program. Must, however, be clear that implementing the anti-bribery policy is the responsibility of everyone in the organization and cannot be delegated to a, a person or group of persons. Uh, implementing anti-corruption measures is uh, not strictly limited to uh, an organization. It has also ex to extend to those with whom the organization has business dealings, including suppliers, subcontractors, or agents. Uh, before hiring uh, these business partners, it is necessary to conduct due diligence to make sure that they are on the same wavelength with respect to integrity. Actually, most uh, corruption, uh, uh, large scale corruption that uh, takes place today, um, uh, takes place through, uh, through third parties, through intermediaries or consultants. Communication and training are further elements of an anti-corruption program. They are necessary to promote the integrity culture and to make sure that everyone understands what it means in concrete situations. Uh, since uh, gifts and hospitality and sponsoring, sponsoring can be used as channels for corruption, it is necessary to issue clear guidelines describing what is acceptable and what is not. Another important feature of an anti-bribery management system or of any compliance system for that purpose is a reporting channel for reporting violations of the policy on a confidential basis and without fear of reprisal. Uh, this uh, channel, I think it's important that it is also available to personnel to obtain guidance and advice on a confidential basis. And if violations of policy are reported or discovered, it must be investigated. And uh, of course, measures state must be taken to remedy the situation, make sure that it does not recur and um, disciplinary measures must be taken as appropriate. So this is in a nutshell the situation with respect to combating corruption in the world. Uh, there remains much to be done, but uh, I think that there is no doubt that progress has been made and that attitudes have changed. Corruption has ceased to be viewed as a necessary evil as it was some decades ago. Uh, corruption cases now occupy space in the media on a daily basis. But this should not be taken to mean that there is more corruption. It should rather be viewed as evidence that uh, corruption is no longer tolerated. Thank you very much. <laughs>